Visage is no joke. One of the scariest games I've ever played. <gasps> yeah. I've always been a fan of horror ever since I was a kid. There's just something about this primal feeling that makes me feel alive. I can kind of relate it to a stuntman looking for a bigger and more dangerous stunt. Or perhaps a speedrunner reaching for their next PB. In essence, my name is Corpsey and I'm a horror junkie. Even amongst my friends, I'm the one convincing them to go hiking in the forest with me at 3am. The reason I'm telling you this is to show that I've been around the block. So when I react like this, <laughs> I am truly experiencing fear. I would consider there to be three types of horror games. The Jump Scare Fest. This would be the Five Nights at Freddy's, Slender the Eight Pages. Hey, God damn you, pumpkin bastard! Those maze flash games where the picture of the exorcist pops up with a loud scream. In this category, the fear produced is just an unexpected loud noise alongside a creepy image. The action horror, Dead Space, Fear, Left 4 Dead, The Last of Us. Any game with a horror aesthetic where you have the ability to effectively combat your enemies. The psychological horror, a game that disturbs your mind emotionally. This type of game makes you see the world in a different way, even if just for a limited time. It's this type of conditioning where you'll find games like Silent Hill, Corpse Party, and Doki Doki Literature Club. Fear is subjective. I'm not saying one of these categories is above another. In fact, I'm very terrified of jump scares, which is why I've never been able to finish a single FNAF game. Alright, so I'm actually in the middle of editing this video and I got to the FNAF part, how I could never beat a FNAF game. So I'm going to try it out and see if I could finally beat a FNAF game. I also really love Dead Space and The Last of Us. Those are two of the best games I've ever played. But there's just something about this final category that sticks with me mentally. There's an emotional connection that bridges these games from just being games to having an impact on the way I see my life. Every time I go back and play Silent Hill 2, there's just a feeling I get that I can't quite explain. It's like when you see a toy from your childhood, and it opens up memories from a simpler time. This is why my channel is mainly based around Corpse Party. Visage earns the right to be put alongside these games. Visage is a PC horror game developed and published by Sad Square Studios. The game is still in early access and doesn't have a release date as of this recording. Despite this, the version I played is amazing. It starts off really disturbing, making you witness a brutal crime in the first person. After that, the game just throws you into this house, which remains as the main setting for the rest of the game. Immediately, you're given PT vibes. Even the developers acknowledge that PT was a huge inspiration. If anyone doesn't know what PT is, it's a short, playable teaser created by the brilliant Hideo Kojima that was cancelled by Konami. It's also a game that really scared my friend and I when we played it in 2014. In Visage, you explore this creepy house until you inevitably stumble onto a key item. Examining a key item will begin a story chapter. There are only two chapters in the game, however, both chapters have their own great storylines that can be played out of order. The environments also change depending on which chapter you're currently playing. For example, while playing Lucy's chapter, you can easily find your way to the basement. In Dolores' chapter, well, this. Gameplay can be broken down into two segments. There's the Where the fuck do I go? segments, which is where you'll be examining every nook and cranny to find out what you need to do in order to progress the story. Then there's the segments where you figure out what to do and proceed to do it. Occasionally, you'll be rewarded with some story set piece, but once you're done with that, it's right back to Where the fuck do I go? In between these portions of gameplay, you'll be stalked by the chapter's antagonist, whether it be the girl from the grudge, my grandma, 
or the scariest, this fucking thing. You can only see this monster with the flash of your camera, which essentially makes you in control of the scares. Oh my god, every time I click that, I'm fucking scaring myself. There are effective ways to survive these encounters. The obvious is to run away and hope for the best. It's following me! Oh, oh, yes. But there's also a sanity meter that makes it less likely for the monsters to appear if you keep your sanity in check. You can do this by not staying in darkness for excessive amounts of time, which is really hard because the power can randomly go out and you'll have to find your way to the breaker in the basement to fix it. It's even worse in Lucy's chapter because the boogeyman straight up takes away all the light switches. The main strategy is to use a lighter to find your way around. It's also a great idea to light the candles around the house to save lighter fluid. There are also light bulbs that can be used to fix broken lights. The constant managing of your sanity can feel daunting at first, but after a while, it becomes second nature. At worst, you can find pills to take in order to effectively bring your sanity to a manageable level. The story is told few and far between. As mentioned before, there are only two chapters. While each chapter does have their own separate storyline, there isn't an overarching story. In Dolores' chapter, you explore the house through mirrors that expand the environment, also while being stalked by Grandma. Hi Grandma! Ah! You see, Grandma's gone a little mad, and all she wants is her baby. This chapter has some of the best puzzles that aren't that difficult to figure out, but you really do need to be paying attention and also make mental notes of where things are. It's the longest chapter because it's very puzzle heavy. This isn't a bad thing if you're into classic survival horror games. There's even a poem puzzle that reminded me of Silent Hill. Through each puzzle you solve, you'll get more story elements to paint a picture on what happened to grandma. The game doesn't hold your hand in gameplay or story, you need to actively pay attention to your surroundings to process and understand the narrative. This chapter took me roughly 6 hours to complete, not only because of the world exploration and puzzles, but also because I was fearing my next encounter with grandma at all times. Lucy's chapter isn't as puzzle oriented as Dolores's, but in trade, it's the scariest chapter. This segment truly knows how to mess with the player's head. There is more of a sense of spectacle in this chapter. What I mean is, there are more set pieces more frequently. The puzzles in this chapter are focused on finding where to go instead of actually solving physical puzzles. This makes for an easier time getting through the segment, as you'll be more focused on evading the creatures and reaching the end. That being said, it doesn't help that the boogeyman is one of the two creatures in this chapter. You know, this guy. This is also the chapter where all the lights are permanently turned off, which adds intensity to the horror. At least you'll have the camera flash to spot the monster when it's near. But you know that memorable scene from the first Saw movie, where the guy has to use his camera flash as his only light source? Well, if your lighter runs out, and it will, you're going to very much feel the dread in that situation. This chapter took me around 2 hours to beat, but they were 2 terrifying hours. The sound design is phenomenal. There's an atmosphere to every location. Five. There's also very brilliant use of silence too. Sometimes all you can hear are your footsteps as you walk down a corridor. Without this sound there would be no fear. The most intense sound however, is those you correlate with being chased. No, 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 yes, no, drop, drop, pill, 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 take it, take a picture, take a picture, take a picture, take a picture, oh, thank god. <gasps> no! What is this game? Why is this a game? <laughs> <laughs> Notice how there wasn't any actual threat, just some sound effects and limited vision. It's this type of horror you'll be faced with when you play Visage. It's all in your head. This game messes with you mentally, and it makes for a horrific experience. I can confidently say that this game lives up to PT, not only in graphics and style, but in execution. In 2014, PT was the scariest game I ever played. In 2019, Visage brought back those same feelings. 
I highly recommend you seek out this game when it's fully released. However, if you're itching for something close to PT, I would recommend Visage on Early Access. The game is set to be released with a total of 4 chapters. I honestly can't wait to replay this game in the near future, to experience the same feelings of dread I love so much. Have a happy Thanksgiving everybody, my cat is taking a sh- Thanks everybody for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And also make sure you follow my Instagram and Twitter down in the description below. As well as join my Discord and follow me on Twitch if you want to experience new and old games together. Shout out to Ubu that guy, Garrett12573, and MikeyPlace13 for helping me grow a pair and finish this game. game, 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 game. Through each puzzle solved. <laughs> Through each puzzle solved. <laughs> through each puzzle. <laughs> through each puzzle solved. You'll get more story elements to paint a pig. <laughs> Why?